Hi, I'm Andreas and I'm here at Premier Nissan and today I would like to show you the 2020 Nissan LEAF. The Nissan LEAF is Nissan's first fully electric vehicle, which means no gasoline and no emissions. It comes in five different trim models and two different battery options. The two different battery options are 40 kilowatt as well as 62 kilowatts on the battery. Now the main difference is simply range. 40 kilowatts will get you a 150 mile range, 62 kilowatts will go up 226 miles. You also have five different trim levels available. You have an S and SV on the 40 kilowatt option and an SSV on an SL if you go with the plus model with the 62 kilowatt battery. So what's the difference when you start going up from one trim level to the next one? When you go and upgrade from an S to an SV, you're adding things like aluminum alloy wheels. You do add the door to door navigation system as well as intelligent cruise control. In the same step up on a plus model, you also get bigger aluminum alloy rings. If you want to upgrade all the way to an SL model, you also get additional leather interior as well as a power driver's seat among many other features that make that a very exciting vehicle. So now that you know a little bit about the difference, let's get started. And the easiest way to start, right up here. So we're going to open up right here and then we'll have a look inside. The first thing you notice is that it looks a lot cleaner than you would see on a regular car with a combustion engine because there's just a lot fewer parts inside the engine compartment. So when you look right here in the middle, the first thing you'll see is a big box right here, which is your inverter. Right underneath, which you can't really see from here, is your actual electric motor as well as your one gear reduction drive. There's no transmission on this vehicle. Your accessory battery is to the side right here. This is what powers your lights, your radio, and any other accessory needs inside the vehicle. So let's look like what this looks at inside the vehicle. Uh, you can see the orange portion in the center of the vehicle, which is the main battery, which is actually under the vehicle floor, which makes the vehicle a lot more stable and it'll handle a lot better because all the weight's actually under the car. If you look up to the left, you'll see the green circled areas is what we looked at under the hood earlier, which is the inverter on the vehicle. And then right underneath, you also see a little red area which is the traction motor and the reduction gear, which is what's actually driving the car. So most of the heavy things are under the vehicle or right in front right here, allowing the leaf to handle really well. Right here in the front is the charging door. You can open this with a button on the remote or you can open it from the inside of the vehicle. Once you open it up, you will see there are two ports in here. So on the left side, you see a larger one once we open it up. This one is a Chatamo port. This is your quick charge port. So this is the one you would use if you want to quick charge the vehicle. On the right side, you see a little orange cap right here. Once we open that up, there's a port underneath. That's for your cheap plug. This is level two charging or your trickle charge at home. Make sure you close the caps again before you close the lid to make sure you don't damage anything. The Nissan Leaf also comes equipped with an intelligent key. Little key just like this. Only big difference from your standard key is that you actually don't have to use it to get in the car or to even drive the car. So one thing you can do with this, just put it in your pocket, put it in your purse and you can leave it right there. In order to open the car now, all you have to do is push the little button on the door handle right here. You hear one beep and the door will open. Now the only door that opened was this one right here. As you can tell the rear door is still locked because I only pushed the button one time. If I want to relock this vehicle, I'll push this button again and the doors are locked, which also locks all the other doors. If I want to open all of the car up, all I have to do is push the button twice. So we're going to do it once, twice, and now this door will open as well as the rear door or any other door on the vehicle. In order to relock it, simply push again and the whole car is locked again. This is a really convenient feature when you come out of the grocery store carrying bags or anything else that make it inconvenient to look for a key because you can just leave it where it's at and still have a way to unlock the car and open the doors. Next thing we want to look at is the trunk on the Nissan Leaf. I'm just going to open it right here and we're going to have a closer look inside. One great thing about the Nissan Leaf is that they put the battery underneath the vehicle 
and that way they don't impede in your cargo room giving you a full size trunk so when you look in here there's actually a lot of space on the left side right here you can see a little bag this is what holds your charging cable that comes with the vehicle so depending on the vehicle you have you either have a standard charging cord or you also have a standard charging cord with an adapter for your level 2 charging the Nissan Leaf does not have a spare tire so all you would do is in case of a tire puncture open the little panel up right here in the trunk and you will see there's a tire inflator kit right in here and uh, this would allow you to reinflate your tire with a compound in it that allows you to still drive safely after. The rear seat is actually a split bench so you have a 60-40 split on the rear seats which allows you to fold them forward and create more cargo room and at the same time you can still carry a passenger. It's pretty easy to do, all you have to do is pull the little plug on the back of the seat right here then all you have to do is fold the seat forward and there you have it we created more cargo room already all right here we're on the inside of the Nissan Leaf it's uh, very spacious as you can see I'm 6'2 and I have plenty of headroom in here so no problems with the space on top there's also good legroom in the car it's very comfortable to sit in very comfortable to drive so if you're commuting spend a lot of time on the car it's a, a very great option now on the left side right here where you have the steering wheel, a lot of your instruments and controls are obviously located right there. There's an in-dash display which shows you your charging levels on the battery. It shows you your estimated range on the vehicle. Uh, it gives you some other vehicle information that you can cycle through it with some controls on the steering wheel right here. It has a speedometer on there. And then right next to it you have an 8 inch touch screen which is your display screen right here for the navigation system, audio settings, system settings or anything else that's relevant to the vehicle you can display right here. There's some more controls on the steering wheel, you have audio controls on the steering wheel on the left and cruise control on the right side. This particular vehicle is equipped with the intelligent cruise control and it also has pro pilot assist, there's a little blue car on the steering wheel with some circles around it showing you that that's what you have on the car. Once you turn it on, it turns on the semi-autonomous driving feature on this vehicle. The way it works is that there's a camera right up here behind the mirror that looks forward on the lane markers on the road in front of you. And it will keep you between the lane markers and the intelligent cruise control at the same time and make sure you keep a safe distance with the vehicle in front of you. Really great feature, all you have to do is just slightly touch the steering wheel as long as your hands are on there. It will stay engaged, once you take your hands off it will actually turn off. So a pretty great feature to have, especially if you do a lot of commuting and stop and go traffic. Some buttons that you have on the left side right here, there's one button right here that lets you override the charging timer. All you have to do is push the button in case you have a timer set on the car. Once you do that, the vehicle will start charging. If you don't do that, it'll still think it has to go by the timer, it just won't start charging. It's just plugging it in itself won't start that. Uh, right next to it is a button to open the little charging door on the front, the same we opened with the remote uh, earlier. Now in the center underneath the navigation system or the big 8 inch display you also have your climate control features so everything to set the temperature in the vehicle is located right there and then right underneath you have uh, two USB ports as well as a 12 volt outlet to charge your devices, phones or anything you would want to plug in. Uh, right behind it is an eco button this is allowing you to put the vehicle into eco mode which makes it more efficient so you're going to get a little bit more range uh, the only drawback to it is that the acceleration on the vehicle will slow down a little bit so it may feel a little bit sluggish in stop and go traffic but it gives you a little bit more reach with the battery that you have it's not just turning it back on you get normal performance back on the vehicle right next to it is the e-pedal button this allows you one pedal driving on the vehicle so if you have that enabled all you would do is push the gas pedal to accelerate the vehicle take your foot back off the gas pedal and the vehicle will slow down all the way at the complete standstill will do this very effectively and efficiently not quite like real braking like when you have to push really hard but it's perfect for stop and go traffic or if the traffic's just creeping along which we have a lot here in the bay area so it's perfect for that uh, it will also work uphill downhill so I don't have to worry about it. it's good for all situations uh, right behind it is the shift knob it's a little joystick shift knob which allows you to put the vehicle uh, in drive in reverse as well as park all you have to do is move the joystick over push it uh, forward for reverse, push it back if you want to drive and then if you wanted to park the vehicle there's a little button on top just push it down and the vehicle will be back in park. Right behind it on this particular car we have an electric parking brake so 
so you don't have to do that manually it's just a little switch that you flip and uh, it will actually put the car in park and then if you want to turn it back off you just do the opposite and it'll kick the parking brake right back off in the middle of the car you have an autochromatic mirror right here uh, this will go dark by itself if somebody comes up with bright lights right behind you you don't have to do anything to make that work and then there's also three buttons right here for your home plank if you have a remote control at home for your garage door or for your electronic gate then this will be something you can program it in and you can make it work within the vehicle without having to bring your remotes along. So a lot of great features in this vehicle and I know you're going to love driving it.